Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of round 13 of the Serie A season 23-24 A round that made things a teeny bit tight up top thanks to a draw in the Derby d'Italia and third and fourth place uh, Milan and Napoli winning still still Inter we just have to live with that Inter uh, the best team but it will be decisive weeks coming up for Inter as well uh, there's quite a few things to talk talk about. I know I'm not gloating about Milan. Um, we'll see about that. There's a lot to talk about about Milan, but I want to give some respect to Salanetana. Yes, I'm wearing a away jersey. They got a home win. Their first win of the season. First win on the Pippo Inzaghi. 2-1 over Lazio in the first game that we'll talk about for sure as well a teeny bit. Uh, but before we go into that, we also have a new coach at, at Napoli. Rudy Garcia finally out. We talked about that already. Uh, the question was who is going to get appointed? And again, De Laurentiis managed to get a very underwhelming appointment in, in appointing Walter Mazzari. Yes, 10 years ago and he almost eliminated Chelsea when they were on their run to the Champions League and that Napoli team was actually uh, quite fun to watch but everything that Mazzari has touched since turned more or less into BS in many ways and he seemed like you know this has been it also that he, I think he always played three in the back Napoli prefer four in the back so it didn't seem as a natural fit uh, I was not very excited. I was hoping that they pull out something bigger. Not Conte. I don't know. I do not want to see Conte, Conte but you know that I get a coach in that is a little bit more adventurous. So we can't go and see. At least the first signs it has, as we saying, it was not all that bad. Maybe, maybe just see the season out and then you can go for a proper coach I would like to say and then the other big story and I know we could talk about this of course uh, the Camarda story uh, Francesco Camarda the youngest ever Serie A player making his debut for Milan because Milan doesn't have any strikers with Leao injured Okafor out Giroud suspended because he was stupid enough to get himself sent off a last time at the time around and so you have to rely on a 15 euro I think 15 euro in eight months or something in March he's turning 16 um, which is rather remarkable I mean he couldn't do much in the game we'll talk about the game uh, a little bit later but it was rather remarkable to have such a young guy and you could see how he was a little bit overwhelmed when the entire stadium was yelling uh, his name when he came he came on I think he barely touched the ball uh, but there were also the nice stories com coming you know that when he was called to the squad he and his mama uh, made some treats that they gave to, 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 to the squad which I find so uh, it's endearing but also a little bit misplaced to you know millionaire players and you come here with some sweets but you know cute and then he's shy enough that uh, his father and him had to queue at Casa Milan to get tickets for the game because he didn't want to ask the officials to give him tickets boy has to learn a little bit in any case I think he's a great talent uh, given what he's shown in the Primavera on the other side I've seen too many 15 years uh, you know with their careers fidgeting out early so I'm always a little bit careful getting too excited but let's talk about the current round we'll start in Salerno Immobile converted a penalty before the half uh, and he is now the first uh, Serie A player to score a hundred away goals another milestone for probably the foremost striker in Serie A over the past decade and one that doesn't do anything for the Azzurri which is uh, this is Immobile in one in, 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 in a nutshell however Lazio is also a team that is not quite right looking Overall, after a great season, I don't think... I mean, yes, they lost Milinkovic, Sav, Sav, Savage, among other players. And I think that um, Sarri is not quite getting it uh, all well together. Still, uh, this is a large society. It's much, much, much better than the mid-table position that they're currently in. Salernitana turn it around. This is last place, Salernitana. Turn it around. Castanos in the 55th and then Candreva. Of course, Candreva, former La 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 player, with a very swervy shot from far, far out. Turn it turn around and celebratory scenes in Salerno. Maybe this is the time for another escape because we had Salerno almost down this time. Not. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Walter Mazzari's debut uh, against Atalanta was actually, for, especially for the first half, looking really good. Napoli looking a little bit lib- liberated. And you know, we knew that the squad uh, the squad had squabbles with the uh, former coach uh, Garcia. This time around, it has, has to say, uh, it seemed like almost uh, they were very happy to be with Mazzari there. And that's also how they played, and especially in the uh, later stages of the four first half. I mean, Rahmani had a goal design for the most infinitesimal of offsides that I've ever seen. I mean, it's just bare of the foot, and this was, uh, you know, the semi automated offside. It worked out in, in this case, but then in, in the end, Quaraskelia, Raskelia, I should say. Uh, gets the go-ahead goal and then uh, before the half Napoli should, should have double the lead. How in the second half Atalanta much changed put Na Napoli in the back foot get an equal to Lukman were pressing for the other goal and then Osiman assists Elmas and it is 2-1 for Na Napoli that took the, the life out of Atalanta and in, in, in the end it is uh, Na Napoli who get back on track it was an important win Important win is also what Milan got against Fiorentina after four uh, winless games in a row and, you know, losing two home home games. One this time they win 1-0. And it was such a weird game because in the first half it took a little bit to get going. It was not very cohesive. And yes, if you have Jovic and uh, Chukwese up front who have not barely played, it's gone. It, 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 it is going, going to be hard. But, you know, with Pulisic playing on his preferred left side, Thought they might get, get, get something going. And actually, I think for the most part of the first half, Milan were the better and more dangerous team. Um, and they concede a penalty where Hernandez is brought down in the box. Yes, there's a double jeopardy rule, but I think it should have been a red card also because he would have gone straight on goal and scored right there. Scores anyway, it's 1 0. And I think if this, if Fiorentina have, have, have to go down to 10 men, uh, then they cannot do the uh, storm that they unleashed in the second half. It also had to do that Pioli basically said, yeah, we have this important game against Dortmund, so let's hold back and not last on play out. And Fiorentina created quite a few chances. And Mike Mignon playing with a fever, playing with a fever over uh, uh, over 38 degrees or, or something Celsius. Uh, Celsius. I cannot even, I'm not even getting out of bed if I have that. He's playing and he's pulling out saves. Some really great ones, especially in the very, very last minute. However, should not even got that. Jovic needs to bury the big chance that he gets uh, midway through the, sec- the second half. Yes, I think it was a good save as well. He made over the right choice, just lifted a little bit more. And you get off the, off the schneid and actually we might talk about Jovic being a great striker. And of course, we also had Kamara coming on in the 83rd and for Jovic, which was basically the highlight of the second half. No, the highlight of the second half was the face save by Mike Menio. An unbelievable save. I mean, he's just putting his face there on the line. Um, and yeah, Fiorentina probably would have deserved a draw out of this one. But I'm happy Milan got that win. Uh, we had then on Sunday, early on, I'm, I'm really a little bit mad that I couldn't see this game. An absolute crazy game between Empoli and Sassuolo. No, it, I could have watched this game. It was not on my radar. It was more like a Premier League lo- looking. Uh, my bad. Empoli took a one lead through Caputo. Uh, uh, Sassuolo turn, turn around uh, 2-1 or in the 26th so it's 4th, 12th and 22nd 2-1 in the 30th it's 2-2 already crazy Berardi re-establishes the lead with an appeal in the 66th however an uh, own goal in the 86th you thought that Empoli can steal a point and M- Empoli is one of those teams that we also think they might go down they are not looking good and they might go down because they cannot hold on to this one goal because Berardi scores a winner lay lay down. But 4-3, that's the, the amount of result. And actually this pulls the average of Seri- uh, the goal average of Serie A a little, a little bit high in, in, in a round where they were not... I mean, it was an okay round, but it, it was not a very goal-filled round either. Uh, if, 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 if you look at the results, it's not all that bad. But yeah, it was lifted for sure. Uh, then with Frosinone getting a 2-1 over Genoa, the two uh, fellow promoted teams. I always thought that Genoa, Genoa is the better one, but Frosinone at home is actually quite strong. Cagliari also won one against Monza as the third promoted team. Um, it seems like that the promoted teams have arrived in Serie A at the moment, and let's see where this will carry us. We know third, third, 13 rounds, there's still more than 20 games to go. This might be a chance 
there. Then Roma uh, had a little bit of hard time. I mean, Dybala was there and Roma look, Lou looks a bit changed. He assists Mancini for the first goal. However, Tom Ver gets an equalizer in the 50-57. Then it comes late. A really nice uh, uh, one-two move between Lukaku and Dybala. Allows Dybala to go through. Make it 2-1 for, 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 for Roma. And then El Sharabe, another really nice, nice move. Uh, makes it a prop, proper win. And maybe, just maybe, Roma have gotten the turnaround, the one that Lazio is still waiting for. However, the big game was, of course, uh, 2v1 Juve against Inter. The Derby d'Italia, there is no love lost, and we saw it when laid on Quadrado, who just was at Juve and was already a thorn in the side of Inter. Now he is at Inter, and he, of course, was whistled all over the place. Being that it is Juve, we did not expect a great game. However, in the first half, we got a, actually a good game. The teams went for each other. It was open. Juventus decided not to hang back. Juventus' idea was, we'll strike first. And they struck, struck first. And with Chiesa and Vlaovic, they actually have um, good players back that actually will help them in that end. And they went, it's exactly those two that combined a really nicely played goal in the 27th minute. And at that point, I really thought that Juve will just hang back and see it out. They didn't know that, you know, up front, if the best striker, not only Italy, one of the best strikers in uh, the world at the moment, and uh, Marcus Thuram, the perfect foil for him, and they, another really nice slip goes just six minutes later, and it's 1-1, and at this point, you really thought we have a classic on our hands, because the first half was a real fun watch. For two teams that, you know, I'm not so hot on, especially Inter, that was a real fun watch. And then came the second half. And the longer the second half went, it got only really ignited when Cuadrado came on the 70th minute because suddenly there was a uh, bad guy on the field. But the longer the game went, it was more or less both teams acknowledging, yeah, I think a draw is all right. Yes, if Inter win, they basically distance themselves from Juventus. If Juve win, they take the uh, first in the league. But in the grand scheme of things... The 1-1 one, one is not a bad result, and that's exactly how they were playing. No one really went for, for the win, and especially Juventus kept kept it tight on the back, and Inter have Champions League games come, come, coming up, so in that, in that sense also. It was a little bit of a letdown, I have to say, the second half, especially the second half. The first half was fun. Second half, yeah, it's not what I want to see from such a big, big, big match. But I guess that at, that, at this stage in the season... You will not get it. Uh, it will be a different story when they meet for the second time uh, later next year, late, late, late this season. Yesterday, Lecce had twice to lead at Ellas. Ellas fired back. Doesn't get them in anywhere. And a team that we are mentioning way too little, but nah, maybe I have mentioned, but Bologna still, Bologna are still doing well. They have only two losses. Uh, not scoring many goals, but also not all conceding. I mean, two goals by, by, by Bologna. They've scored 15 in third, 13 games. Uh, Bologna are sitting now relatively high in the, ta in the table as well. And um, I would, I actually would find it real fun if Bologna could actually make it into Europe this season. And a 2-0 over Torino is not a bad result between two very traditional teams. Lead us to the standings that you already saw uh, uh, going through. That um, Bologna sitting now in sixth spot, level with Roma. And given the performance, it sounds, sounds about right. Uh, as I said, Inter and Juve tying makes the table a little bit tighter. Uh, Milan is now six behind Inter, four behind Juve. Now, 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 two points more. But I think those four teams are probably the ones for Champions League. I don't think that Roma or Bologna will get in there. If you look at the bottom, it's a broad field starting from Lecce. I don't, Sassuolo think, yeah, got the turn to turn, 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 but I think starting probably, probably with Lecce, we're looking at re relegation, especially when we go to Cagliari, Empoli, Ellas, and Salonitana. Only one of them will survive, and we have to see Udine also precariously low in there. Uh, the model says it will be Cagliari, Ellas, and Salonitana. But let, let's see about that. We also see that uh, the top four are relatively uh, safe in many ways. Looking at the next round, it's only one game that sticks out big time. Napoli, Inter. And if you want to have a tight Serie A, you want Napoli to win this one. 
There's no doubt, 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 doubt about that. You will have a winnable game against Monza, although last year they did not uh, do well there. Milan have a winnable game at home to Frosinone, although that's probably a tougher opponent than everyone would expect. Napoli play Inter. I think that's pretty big. That, that's pretty big. And I, I don't know, Torino, At At Atalanta, I still have the memories of the 7 0 that happened a few seasons ago there. So that was it for me from Serie A. Really looking forward to this next round. Napoli Inter should be a fun game, to be honest. But Napoli have not been good at home. Any case, let me know what you think about the league. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.